This episode of Road Soda is brought to you by Reggie Johnson's Weight Loss Hair Growth Serum. Are you a fat guy who wears hats or a fat lady who wears wigs? Well, stop. With our new patented formula, turn your fat into hair. This serum is guaranteed to change your fat on a molecular level into hair. They said it couldn't be done, but they never met Bob Chansey. Hi, I'm Bob Chansey. I used to be so fat and bald. Now I'm not. Join Bob and hundreds of others who have purchased our product and watch your spare tire turn into hair power. I'm Reggie Johnson, inventor of the magical weight loss hair growth serum. My brother has cornered the dick pill market and I have cornered everything else. All you do is take a squirt of this shit, put it on your fat ass and your bald head, and bam! Stop looking dumb, being fat and bald. Get yourself a head of hair li like a lion. You're gonna be so damn skinny with so much hair, people gonna freak out. You're gonna scare kids. Turn your life around with my weight loss hair growth serum. Reggie Johnson, scary skinny, scary hairy. Hello and thank you for cracking another Road Soda, episode one, two, three, that's right, 123 Road Sodas down the hatch, that's one full recycling bin that you gotta carry down to the curb, baby. On this episode, Utah has got some jokes. We stop by the arcade, and then after that, we swing by the laundromat. I'm Isaiah. Thank you for stopping by, everybody. Hello, and thank you. I hope you all had a wonderful week. Here we are in a bright Sunday. Monday. Today's Monday. It's Martin Luther King's Day. If you are working, uh, you're a racist. And if you're not, well, then I guess you're not a racist. I, that's pretty simple, right? And uh, I am Isaiah, and here we are flying alone on this episode uh you know it's a you could see it's a little bit of a shorter episode and that's just how things work out there must be an episode so don't worry and i've got some fun things for you especially in the news coming up that's going to be a lot of fun and we have uh, the arcade coming up after that and we were talking about the game tint so check that out and then following that we have our millennial book club where we just fucking watch netflix and the Netflix original that we are watching, or that we're talking about, is The Laundromat. So, uh, really great things to talk about next week is going to be a fun episode. Um, just because if it's if what is going to happen that I think is going to happen, we'll have some fun. And that'll be good. So, guys, if you ever want to write into the show, you can write in to roadsodamail at gmail.com. That's the email address. It's very simple. Roadsodamail at gmail.com. If you want to, hey, I, I don't know how to read or write, Mr. Isaiah. I, I, what, what, I want to contact you too. Okay, how about you call us up? You can dial the phone and or, or ask somebody to dial the phone for you. I don't know what your life is. And uh, 706-200-1213. Again, it's 706-200-1213. You let that thing ring all the way through, leave a message, and boom, you're on the show. It's that simple. And uh, yeah, guys, thank you again for, for joining us. Now, also some uh, interesting news. There is now uh, a subreddit, R Road Soda. I was pretty surprised that no one's ever made a... A subreddit called R Road Soda before. Uh, I thought for sure I was going to have to make R Road Soda podcast, but I would prefer to leave it just Road Soda. Um, either way, you can, there's nothing there yet. I literally made it, I probably shouldn't even tell you because you're going to go and you're going to be like, oh, that, I don't want any part of this. But I'm, because <laughs> there's nothing there. So I literally just made the Road Soda uh, subreddit. And uh, I'm gonna, I'll start adding things to it, and I want to make it uh, a, a little community for us to all come together in one middle place. It seems like it might be a pretty easy place. Also, who knows? Maybe we'll pick up some stragglers, and uh, everyone else can crack a road soda as well and enjoy the sweet, bubbly, refresh, refreshing. That's more like it. Uh, sounds of a road soda. 
But first, how about another word from our sponsors? Last call. You're filing for bankruptcy. The lawyer said stop spending, cut up the credit cards, and he'll help you with the judge. It doesn't have to end yet, though. When it's closing time at the bar, they turn on the lights to tell you there's time for one more round. Let us turn on that light for you. Last call. Last Call is the app that makes sure you don't leave any of your hard-earned spending potential on the table. Sure, the gold card is no good anymore, but how about that gas card or that Macy's card? That boat they're going to repossess? Did someone say unexpected theft and or fire? And you'd be surprised how much we can get you for your identity. You don't need it. You're about to go bankrupt. Last Call can help you turn these opportunities into cash. Don't be victimized by lost opportunity. Our team of Jewish lawyers are standing by to help you buy that last round. Because this closing time is going to last 7 to 10 years. Last call. This one's on the house. A Popco brand. Breaking news. And now, this just in, hot off the, the news machine, right out of the, right off the streets and to your ears. Here it comes. Any second now, we got the news. Also, guys, uh, all the news goes into the show notes, like the actual articles. So if you want to look at these articles yourself, you could just open up wherever you're listening to the show. Go into the uh, the description and all of those News things will be in there. Also, I've never said this, and I'm just remembering it now. I should say, at the end of the show, when we do the wrap-up segment, and we kind of go over the show again, and there's music playing in the background, all of those songs and uh, the artists and their titles are actually in the show notes of every episode. So you can always check that out if you like the songs. It's always kind of like this lo-fi hip-hop shit. You can check that shit out. This week on the news, Utah got some jokes. In fact, this was a pretty big one. I, I think I saw this. <laughs> I saw this before. Uh, it, a lot of people really do about it. Like I saw it first. So, <laughs> uh, governor, governor's office shuts down branded condoms of Utah Health Department's HIV campaign. Now, let me just tell you this about this. If you have not seen this in the news, or if you haven't, uh, you know, seen it on Reddit or some bullshit, now. If you would have just seen this without, like, the, the, the fucking official news article from, like, uh, 2 KUTV, uh, and I, which I'm pretty sure is a, a Utah, an actual Utah news outlet that I found this on, um, they, this looks, like, fake, it doesn't look real. Um, now, it doesn't look real if, so they're condoms, I'm just going to explain it before I even read it, because I, I don't know. Uh, they're, they're condoms, right? And they have these little sayings on them and they're, they're branded by like the, the state. It was like the, the taxpayers paid and they're like, we're going to do this as an HIV campaign in Utah, which I didn't know there was rampant HIV in, in Utah. Is that the spot where we got to like fix it? Right. And, uh, all the, the dong bags, if you will, have these little saying sayings on them and they are not like they're, they're. I couldn't imagine a regular, I couldn't imagine like Durex putting these on their condoms, right? It says, uh, don't go bear. And there's like a picture of a bear on it. Like they're all silly puns. Here, I'll keep reading them. Greatest sex on earth. And, uh, cause I think that's like the Utah slo uh, slogan, greatest place on earth or something. Explore Utah's caves. Are you fucking, that, the, the fucking state of Utah, the government state of Utah sat down with a with a writer's room apparently they got some of the best right got some SNL writers in the, into a writing room and they're like all right we're going what what are these slogans now here's here's one of my favorites ready it's salt so it's it's slut it just says slut it's s l and then a comma and then u t so salt lake city like s l utah right i would assume <laughs> it says i thought that the word slut was like offensive to people, I mean, people say it, but I thought it was, um, like you, you, you can't, like it's, uh, it's one of those words you can't use. I thought, right? This is the place. All right, it's got a picture of a bed. There's uh, Fillmore 
six mile. It's like a street sign. It says Fillmore, and then uh, under it is it says Beaver. <laughs> Jesus, like this is bar- This is edgy shit. I cannot fucking believe a diagnosis doesn't define you. And then uh, that's like the only one. Enjoy your mountain. Uh, you in sex? Get it? That's Jim, they got some fucking writers in there. Jesus. You in ta is like I guess the way you're supposed to say it. Toss the or how the Indians may, might say it. Toss the Jello salad. Right? What does that even mean? <laughs> we all know what toss the salad is, but what is the Jello? It must be a real Utah thing. And then put your arch into it, right? Which is they have the famous arch over there. This is this is crazy. Let's read what the article actually says. The Utah Health Department confirms they ordered. Oh, we did it. Yeah, we we did that. Yeah, one hundred and thirty thousand condoms, with forty two thousand having already been distributed. Oh, they're out. It's too late. No takesies, backsies. Oh yeah, they're out there. The kids are using them. <laughs> the state says it's trying to reclaim the distribution. Fat fucking chance. You'd bet your ass if I ever had one of those. That would, that's the, those, I like them. I think they're fucking cool. Uh, an actual company like, uh, what is some other, <laughs> I don't know any, I just know like Durex. I don't know any other kind of companies. Yeah, I don't use dong bags. All right, whatever. The Utah Department of Health confirmed Wednesday that the governor's office asked the branded condoms stop being distributed so that the packaging messages can be uh, reworked. Oh, we're still going to do it. Eh, some of them just didn't land the way we wanted them. <laughs> oh, but we're still doing it. Money's already spent, baby. Bring them back in. I will change the slut one. Eh, but I like the put your arch into it. That's a good one. The campaign called The H is for Human launched on Monday and focuses on raising HIV awareness includes a new website. Part of the campaign is especially branded condoms and their distribution. However, a volunteer committee member who helped create the campaign said he was told to stop distributing the condoms in an email from a fellow committee member followed up whatever. We get it. They were calling him back. Look. Let me tell you this. Do you know what the irony of this is? So this was this whole thing was to raise awareness for HIV, right? Um, if this came out and it wasn't like almost offensive and got picked up by every news source and then put onto Reddit and all that kind of stuff, less than a third of the coverage. If you're talking about awareness, this is either the biggest oversight I've ever seen in my life or the, the most genius fucking marketing I've ever seen in my life. So the oversight obviously being who the fuck pressed go on that one. (laughs) All right. And the other one is you couldn't get more awareness. You couldn't get more awareness by doing something so borderline offensive. Everyone freaking out about it, putting it on Reddit. Like I already keep saying that I keep, I said Reddit like three times. I think it's because I started actually looking at it for the first time in, in my life. I'll explain why later. Now, what other news is there in this newsy news world? There's always something new going on, as they say. Tiny hats. Let's see. There's something happening with tiny hats. What happened with these tiny hats? Pigeons spotted wearing small sombrero raising concerns in Reno, Nevada. Ah, oh, shit. There goes the fucking neighborhood. The goddamn Mexican pigeons coming over here. They just fly right over. How the fuck are we going to keep them out, huh? What do we got to do? They're over here wearing their fucking hats. All right, first of all, this is very real. This is very real. And this is not fake. This comes to us from ABC6 out of... I'm not sure where where this one actually is out of. Uh, Again, all of these links will be in the show notes, so you can read this yourself. Reno, Nevada. City officials in Reno, Nevada have warned residents who see pigeons wearing hats that there's more than meets the eye. Uh, yeah. (laughs) Thanks. Thanks, officials. No, no, no. These guys, they're not... It's it's like uh, they're gang-affiliated, you know? (laughs) These pigeons are being... They're forming their own fucking gangs, right? While Corky... And and there's actually a picture of it, and I think it's a video. I'm not going to watch the video, but... I'm sure it's just a pigeon with a <laughs> Looks like <laughs> who the fuck's catching these pigeons and putting these little sombreros on them? <laughs> While quirky or fun, it's still inhumane. 
You don't know that. Those pigeons, those pigeons might love that hat. It keeps the sun out of their eyes. It makes them more cool to the other girl pigeons. You don't know. City manager Sabra Newby, eh, who posted the photo on her Twitter page, said the statement to, our, uh, to ABC Reno affiliate Colo. The bird suffered when the when this exact thing happened last year. What? <laughs> these motherfucking tiny hats. The, who keeps putting these? Tiny, this same shit keeps happening year after year. One of them recently died. We don't want any copy hats. Well, birds die. All we you can't you can't say it's because of the hat, right? Everything dies. You don't know it's because the hat. Maybe he was getting so much bird ass. He was he was you know bird fucked to death. You don't fucking know that. You don't know that this bird. Maybe he, or or maybe he was just you know, died a regular old pigeon death. We don't fucking know. As of now, animal services have asked the public's uh, help to track it down. You know what? If I was in Reno, Nevada, I wouldn't call you. I wouldn't. If I saw a pigeon with a hat. I would take a picture, I'd laugh, and I and I and I move on with my fucking day. Cause you know what? There's there's some fu- there's real shit happening in this world. <laughs> Let the pigeons wear their fucking hats. All right. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Look at and they're making this official thing. We, we got to get to the bottom of this. These pigeons with their fucking hats on. Uh, Regional Animal Services said in said a, in a statement to ABC News that while their department focuses on the well-being of domestic animals in our region. We are monitoring the current situation with the recent report of a hat on a local pigeon. Thanks, local animal services. My neighbors got 15 pit bulls starved to death and attacking each other out next door to me. You think you can clean that shit up? After the hat thing, sorry. As soon as hat thing first, once we get to the bottom of these pigeons wearing hats, we'll come over there and take care of your real shit. Jesus Christ. Wash out. I don't even want to read this anymore. That's it. That's as much as we're getting out of that one. You can read it yourself. Please take a look at the pigeon with the tiny fucking hat. And here is our last article. You silly, silly, silly man. That's that's what I call this article. Michigan man finds $43,000. And it's not at a fucking game show. You know where he found it? Second-hand couch. He found it in a second-hand couch. And uh, that's not the end of the title. The The rest of the title is Returns Money to Owner. I'll just let that sink in. $43,000 in <clears throat> second-hand. Second-hand couch. Returns Money to Owner. Jesus fuck me Christ. Well, I think we got the whole story there, but let's just see if there's anything we're missing. All right? When Howard Kirby found more than 43,000, oh, it's more than 40. <laughs> there was something we're missing. Jesus, in a couch he bought at a secondhand store, he knew he couldn't keep it. What the? Ah. Uh, woo. All right, let's keep reading. But for a time, he sure thought about it. Uh. Okay, at least he fucking thought about it, right? I know how it is to lose something and never get it back. All right. Kirby said after returning the money. Whoa. What have you lost that has made, that has ingrained that into you so much? All right. Because this, for, let's let's keep talking. All right. Let's keep reading. Kirby purchases a $70 couch. Oh, that's a big turnaround. Uh, from Habitat for Humanity. Oh, it's just $70 with the furniture. $70 altogether of furniture from Habitat Humanity. So the couch is probably only like, what, 20 But after a few weeks, one of the cushions didn't feel comfortable. Hmm. Wonder why. Kirby's daughter-in-law agreed with him. Yeah, it kind of sucks. Why does this cushion suck? So he looked for an answer. She opens it up and pulls out, and she says, Dad, money. Oh, uh, a lot of money. All right, so look, that's... I We might read it when we get a heartfelt story of, of it going... I don't care, right? Let's start with the thing I'm really trying to harp on here, okay? Secondhand couch. If you hide money in a couch... And then sell that couch. That's fair game. You know, $43,000 is a lot of change. And 
Uh, you don't just forget where you put that. You don't just, hey, honey, where did we put that 40? You know, I was looking for that $43,000 we have, you know? Uh, yeah, I'm looking for it. Do you know where we put it is never, ever something to happen. So let's continue to get to the bottom of this. So if, in fact, uh, it, so it was put in there and they, they, they bought it, right? The only way it's put in there and somebody forgets and it changes hands is nefarious purposes. Or maybe... <clears throat> Actually, here's a here's an idea. What if it was some old person and we might get that might these answers might be in the article, but we're not getting them there. We're getting them right here, baby. I'm gonna tell you the answers. Could have been an old old person and they didn't trust banks and they shoved it in there into the couch and then they didn't tell their wife and they died and the wife got rid of the couch because it smelled bad and uh, it smelled like money and she got rid of it. That could be a way that it happened, or it could be you know, like drug dealers putting it in there, you know, it could be drug dealers packing it in there and then they had to abandon it and couldn't go back because the fucking shit was getting too hot. You know, you never know <clears throat> either way, either of those situations. I believe that's your money. I believe that is a gift to you. All right. Now, why? And in the Jewish, and let's, let's not get re religious about this. And you're like, are you going to get real stereotypical because I'm going to give you a a, a, a Jewish explanation here, and they're like, oh, of course you'd keep the money, you're a Jew. But no, the highest form, the highest form of charity on the uh, in, in the world or, or on the earth, the highest form of charity um, in the eyes of, of the Jewish religion is when the giver and the receiver have no idea who they are. They never meet, they never interact, they don't even know they exist. You, uh, kind of like if I were to take $100,000 and set it on a picnic table and just leave, and then the next person walks up and finds that $100,000. That is the, the greatest form of uh, uh, charity. And, and that's... So if this old lady in the first scenario sold a couch and her husband was hiding the cash in there, she never knew it was there. She probably didn't even know it existed. So is it hers? She didn't know. And, her, you know, <clears throat> sure, I guess it is hers, but she doesn't know she lost anything, right? <clears throat> what if this guy really fucking needed it? You never know. Again, it could be in the article. He, he, he maybe needed it, maybe not. You don't know. I, I mean, you could read the article, right? <laughs> but what the fuck is the fun in that? The conversation is the fun part. How about he bought it? right? He purchased the couch. It was his and it came inside the couch. It's just, there's so many reasons. It's not like he found the couch on the side of the road, uh, which again would still be, I, I would, wouldn't change the shit much. Right. Uh, <clears throat> it's not like he was babysitting someone's house or, and he found it. I can't think of another way where the money would be in the couch and you wouldn't, it wouldn't be okay to like, take, I don't know if you find it on the side of the road, like if you find a bag of money on the side of the road, well, that's fucking weird in itself. Why do you have so much cash on in a bag? Right. Again, if you find bag, a bags of cash, it's probably nefarious. It's probably drug money. Like you can, or, or Russians about to buy a house. Like you can keep it. You, you fuck those people. Fuck those people. You're allowed to keep it. Right. Uh, again, I think most plausibly, it's it's um, somebody hiding money from the from the banks. It's usually older people. They don't fucking trust the banks, and they, which is uh, which is probably a good idea. And then, <clears throat> you know, maybe they passed away. They passed away, and they got rid of the couch. Um, but for this guy to turn around and, and give it back to somebody, like, oh, I know what it's like to lose something and never get it back. These people don't know they lost something. <laughs> they don't know. They lost anything. Okay. All right. Sorry, that's a good little news rant. Anyway, check out the article for yourself. Maybe you can read it. Maybe you can read the article and tell me if there's something. I, I refuse to finish the article. Maybe this. Uh, maybe there's more to the story that's going to help me feel better about this. In fact, probably. But I'm not going to read it. You can read it and call me back at 706-200-1213 and tell me if I should feel differently about this. And uh, you could whatever else you want. Leave a message. We'll play it right here on the air. You can also uh, send news articles and shit. Why not? To roadsodamail at gmail.com. That would be great. Why not?
Billy Bum's Bottom Shelf Bourbon, the Panhandler's Premium Beverage. Uh. You've been standing on the corner holding a cardboard sign all day. Finally, someone throws a couple of dimes at you. It doesn't matter that it was high schoolers who just needed something to hit you with because now you can take that break you deserve and get yourself some Billy Bum's Bottom Shelf Bourbon. Uh. I've, been, I've been standing on the side all day and the caterpillar is moving. And I, I, I don't know if the elementary spot, and you can tell because Gene Shallot d- doesn't play bingo anymore. That's why I drink Billy Bums. We put it on the bottom shelf because that's where it goes. Billy Bums bottom shelf bourbon. It's the cheapest. <laughs> Thanks for coming to the arcade, kid. You can exchange your money for the tokens over there in the corner and uh, choose whatever you fucking want, kid. (laughs) This is the new segment, guys. The new segment called The Arcade. And welcome to The Arcade. This segment is where we review games in the Apple Arcade. It's very simple. Apple Arcade is a new service. comes to us from, uh, I think it's Apple. (laughs) And it's it's just like Netflix. Uh, You pay... $4.99 Four ninety nine a month, and you get access to over a hundred games, and that's awesome because that means all those games have no in-app purchases, and it actually makes a good game. These people actually focus on making a story-driven, good fucking game rather than just being like, "How can we make them addicted to this and then bilk them out of money?" I love that word, bilk, bilk them out of money. Just like every other segment on this show, you can uh, <coughs> you can write into the the show at Road Soda Mail, sorry, Road Soda Mail at gmail.com, and you can give us your thoughts on the, uh, you know, the, the arcade game that we're playing, or you can call uh, 706 200 1213. It goes to voicemail, and you can leave a, a voicemail. Last week's game was a game called Pilgrims, and I was, I very much enjoyed that game. I even sent it to uh, my sister, and she played it with her, uh, with her son. It's a it's a cute game. It's a fun game. Uh, but we have a call in also wanting to uh, talk about the game. So this is what we do. If you call into the show, we will uh, play it as part of the segment, so you can be a part of the book uh, not the book club, but a part of the uh, arcade segment. Here we go. So this. Uh... Okay, so it's Grant again. Hey, Grant. Um, as far as the games go, Pilgrims was great. Um, it reminded me of a game, well, a series of games called King's Quest, um, especially King's Quest V. Ooh. Um, you know, you sort of have to acquire objects and then use them as uh, circumstances dictate. Um, this- yeah, I think uh, there it's like point and click. I don't know why neither of us said it on the last segment we were talking about. Yeah, but the... The kind of games is point and click, and I, another game that's pretty interesting that's similar to um, the style in that point and click kind of genre is uh, um, what's it called? Ti- uh, the Titanic. The Titanic. I pl- that was a pretty good game. I, it was a PC game that I played as a, a little kid. All right, here we go. What else does Grant have to say? It was a whole lot less linear than that game. Um, I feel like uh, you definitely could play it more than once and in more than one way. Um, I thought the, the cards that were kind of revealed that showed different scenarios that uh, occurred during the game, um, you could certainly play it to reveal the least amount of cards mm-hmm. or uh, play it to reveal all the cards. Um, I, I think probably I only turned over maybe a third to a half before I completed the game. Um, there's probably endless scenarios many many fish that you could feed to many many people yeah um a lot of fish feeding uh yeah um so i guess this game was produced by the same people who made a game called samarost which Uh, i have heard of um it's been recommended to me um because i played uh, played a different puzzle game series on the phone called monument valley Huh. Which I highly recommend. Monument um, Valley. Just in seeing like screenshots of Sam Rust, it uses the same sort of puppet style 
animation. Sweet. Um, I'm in. Uh, reminds me a little bit of like Howl's Moving Castle, the castle from that movie. Ah. Um, Tint is a solid, I'm going to call it PWP, play it when pooping. Um, hey, that's actually the same. So his voicemail, I believe, ran out of time at that uh, mark. Which is a minute twenty? No, it's uh, two minutes. Two minutes is this, uh, is basically the length of voicemail, and you can always call back and uh, give your your uh, also your thoughts. <laughs> I don't care how long you can call for twenty minutes. Just keep calling back. <laughs> but he called back again to continue, and but he uh, he starts talking about tint, which we are also talking about. So uh, we'll talk about it, and then I'll play his the the other one at the end, which is the rest of you know him talking about tint as well. So. Yeah, he loved. I loved that game as well, man. Pilgrims was really cool, and I'm going to check out Samorost. And the other one he mentioned was Monument Valley. So all that same kind of genre, if you like those, uh, you can try. If you like the game that we played in the arcade, which was Pilgrims, you can try those. But this week was Tint, and uh, this is a very interesting game as well. I've never played a game quite like Tint. Uh, played a lot of puzzle games, just like, you know, I'm sure we all have. But nothing that works in a dimension of of colors like this. It's very interesting. So you have uh, the, your screen. It looks like you are looking down from like a point of view. You're looking down at uh, an artist watercolor pad, and on this and it's like on a table and everything. But on the pad itself, there's like a tiny origami, let's say frog, right? And the frog is sitting on like the right side of the page, and it's green. And then there's like a, 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 there'll be a blue paint line that'll go down the center of the page. And then on the opposite side of that uh, blue paint line will be a yellow dot, right? And the yellow dot is paint and you put your finger on that paint and you drag and it starts to make a stroke. And then you, if you cross over that blue line, of course, everybody knows blue and yellow make green. And then you have the color that now solves the puzzle because the frog is green. So you bring it to the frog. And, of course, this escalates in difficulty as you go. And uh, as the game goes, they add colors. They add new things that you can do. Like you can make color disappear and add all these different things. And just as Grant said right from the beginning, this is a solid play while pooping. That is absolutely the place where I would put this one is, is play while you poop. You don't got to go crazy for it. Um, now, there is a, uh, a function that helps that, like, if you get stuck, it kind of shows you what you should do. And I, I only used it a couple times. I could have sworn I went through a lot of them, but I think they just updated the the um, the game. And there's now 150 puzzles, and they're probably going to keep adding them. But if you... Uh, it, when you play the game, there's like these little tabs on the side of the book, and there's like four of them. I made it through all four of those tabs, so I don't know how to get to more puzzles if there's more puzzles, so I really don't know. Either way, I enjoyed it, again, for a play while you poop. It's a very soothing puzzle game. It can, uh, I think it puts you in a different headspace. Again, it, it massages, or it doesn't massage, it exercises a very, very specific muscle deep in your brain somewhere that we we don't access a lot uh, this this muscle of combining colors and what's the outcome of that color going to be unless you're an artist and you're painting daily that's not something you're thinking about all right and then also trying to use that to to solve a puzzle it's i think it's it's good for you it's a very it's very good for you and it fits into this mindfulness genre that we're in right now where uh, m mindfulness is is big bucks right now there's a lot of mindfulness apps a lot of companies are uh, trying to be mindful and uh, offer mindful shit because it's people want people are trying to be mindful, baby. Um, e anyway, I enjoyed it. It's pretty good. I'd put it right in the middle of play while you play while you poop, and um, it's uh, or maybe like right right before bed, like as you're as you're going to sleep or something. I think would be a, a good good time to play it instead of scrolling through Facebook or some bullshit. Do that. It's, it, it'd be better for you to sleep. Maybe it'll make your dreams more vivid, more colorful. You never know. But let's see what uh, what Grant had to say about Tint. Um, Grant, again, your voicemail is weird. 
What? I don't Anyhow, know. Um, what do you mean? Play it while pooping, PWP, slow build. Um, not the kind of game that I wouldn't be able to set down. You know, I wouldn't, it wouldn't force me to binge it. Um, and I kind of figure, you know, you're already wiping, so. Yeah, uh, use that paper. The second book. Um, but then I kind of stalled. I didn't realize there were hints until that point, and then the hints, I feel, are not really functional, um, or at least I didn't find them helpful. So I think I may be kind of done with the game, because it was fun, but it was not light your pants on fire kind of thing. Ooh, but, uh, that's, that's a big that's, one. <laughs> that's my thoughts. Uh, good luck with this week's podcast. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Grant, and thank you for calling in. And you guys can also call in. He didn't think it was light your pants on fire. This game is so good. I gotta light you. Yeah, light your pants on fire. Or is it gonna just be like your pants are on fire? I don't know. <laughs> it's uh, but yeah, you know, we said the same thing. I think you'll feel the same way about it. Either way, thank you, Grant, for calling in. This week's game is a little different. We're not point and clicking. We're not doing puzzles. This week's game is no way home so on the apple arcade which is a uh you know we already explained what the flipping arcade is okay you already know you're smart i don't have to keep explaining things okay but i do would have to read the little blurb and i'm stalling to pull that information up stranded in a strange galaxy you must fight for survival using only your wits your ship and your party planning robot companion Explore the universe, befriend bizarre aliens, and blast through hordes of monsters as they endeavor, as you endeavor, <laughs> to find your way home. And um, that sounds very epic, but it's a it from all the screenshots and everything, it's a very simple looking game. The animation looks something like um, maybe Adventure Time and or Rick and Morty, uh, that kind of real simple sort of drawing and everything. And you're in space, and it looks like it might be some kind of, you know, you drive around, you blast things, you got a little ship. We'll see how it is. It looks like it's going to be a good game. I'm excited for it. Guys, play No Way Home. You can uh, send your reviews to roadsodamail at gmail.com, or you can call in 706-200-1213. We'll see you on the next arcade. This episode of Road Soda is brought to you by Mind Over Water. Energy, vitality, relaxation, invigoration. Mind Over Water. Mind Over Water offers everything you can possibly want. Will it hydrate? Yes. Does it taste good and will it make me feel good? Yes. Yes. Will it make me full and content? Yes. And also happy. Mind Over Water is the only bottled water that will do everything you can think of. Full amino profile, high protein, high gluten, vegan, gluten free, beef, chicken or fish, dairy filled, and lactose free? Sure, just for you. If you think it, you can drink it. Mind Over Water, a Popco brand. Millennial Book Club Millennial Book Club Now, magic boa constrictors can live up to 200 years without their head. Still just bow, bow, what the happens is they end up strangling sh shit to death and then that's it. They just, they can't really eat it. They kind of get the neck hole on it a little bit. They get a little nutrition that way and they live for, there's a lot of things people don't know about magic boa constrictors. Also, let me tell you about the Millennial Book Club because that is this segment, the MBC. It's the segment where we just watch Netflix originals. Just Netflix Originals, on the last episode, we announced uh, that this episode would be, a, or this segment and this week would be uh, The Laundromat by Steven Soderbergh. And if uh, you guys, if uh, you guys want to send your suggestions or your reviews so you can be a part of the book club, you can do that by sending that stuff to Road Soda Mail 
at gmail.com. Again, roadsodamail at gmail.com. Or maybe you're the phone kind of person, you want to leave a message. You can call our number. It goes straight to voicemail after a, a number of rings. And then you, you can leave a message. And that is 706 200 one two one three. It's a very easy number to remember. Seven zero six two hundred one two one three, and uh, yeah, you can leave those. So the the show we chose now, Steven Soderbergh was the director of this here show, and a lot of people uh, probably know him best from the Oceans trilogy. So he did those, and I love those movies. They're very well done, I think, especially for like the ensemble cast type thing that they're doing there. I think they're great, but that's kind of what he does is more of like psych, uh, psychological crime heist thrillers. And um, I know actually uh, uh, Greg really liked him. There was this one film that he always talked about that um, he really liked of Steven Soderbergh's and some of his other stuffs. In fact, he always said that he didn't really like a lot of his mainstream things, if I remember correctly. It was more of his offbeat shit. But um, this movie, I don't know if it fits in the offbeat uh, but it was, you know, on Netflix. It's a Netflix original. It's a pretty, uh, you know, big one, I guess. Uh, it says, Meryl Streep, Gary Oldman, and Antonio Banderas star in Steven Soderbergh's dark comedy about the financial schemes exposed by the Panama Papers leak. Now, I don't know what the Panama's paper leak is, and I still don't. I didn't look it up. I didn't uh, read about it. And um, I didn't, I'm going to say this right now, as... A lot of things in the Millennial Book Club I do finish, but that's not one of the rules. If you're new to the Millennial Book Club, the rule is like 20 minutes. If, if it's something that you really can't handle or you can't stand, don't force yourself. Don't force yourself to, to watch something that's shitty just so you can tell people you watched it and you hated it. Why would you waste your time? I, and, but here in, with this one, it's not because I did not like it. That's not the reason. In fact, I really did enjoy it. It was just more of a, a time thing and, of course, anybody can find ways to make time, so that's that's on me. But that's not what this is about right now. What this is about is the movie that I probably watched a good half hour to 40 minutes of. And it's with uh, Mary, Meryl Streep, as it says, is more of like the main character. Although Gary Oldman and Antonio Banderas play like duo, uh, uh, duet narrators, if you will. So it opens up and it's them explaining with like, they have this interesting montage uh, going on our intro as it's happening. And Antonio and, and Gary Oldman are talking and at first you don't see who it is, but uh, one of them you assume is Antonio Banderas because uh, it's that, that heavy Spanish accent. And then the other one is like this German accent. I'm like, who the fuck is that other guy? And you finally end up seeing him and it's Gary Oldman. He's doing a German accent. It's funny. It's... Uh, they, what's his, Antonio Banderas can't do any other accent. That's the only thing he can do, <laughs> I guess, right? He's a very versatile actor, okay? You do not say that about Antonio Banderas. Looking pretty good for his age, too. Any hoots, so uh, they're just kind of talking about um, money in a way, and, 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 and that this movie is a tale about money. And then as it starts, it's broken up into what are like these chapters, right? Or like um, not necessarily scenes or anything or acts, but more of, you know, chapters. And I think the first one is the the meek are, the meek are helpless is the name of the first one. And so the movie starts and it's Meryl Streep and her, and her husband and um, who's another famous actor. I've seen him on some shit. I don't know. Anyway, they're on vacation at some uh, lake up in up in New York or some shit and they go on this boat and uh, they're with some other people that are pretty uh, pretty dense people <laughs> she tells this little story and I can't remember what it was about oh, it was like about port side and all this kind of, anyway stupid details the boat fucking flips over right and the husband dies and so now she's like trying to claim in, uh, uh, insurance and all this stuff as, as you should, hoping that the boat insurance is going to cover the 21 deaths that happened. So the whole movie is based around, I don't, I don't think I'm spoiling anything by telling you that it's pretty early on. The husband dies. <laughs> uh, but any, either way, millennial book clubs are, 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 we're allowed to talk about whatever we want. That's what we do. Um, so the husband, he, he passes away and, and she's trying to get this money and the people that, 
uh, run and own the boat. One of them is the guy that plays fucking Ross. I'll never remember his name um, on uh, Friends. And they're talking about how, well, was it insured? And they're like, no, this other insurance company like bought it. And like, well, are they going to pay? And they're like, no, well, they were like giving it to this other insurance company. And like, are they going to pay? Like, no, it expired. It was like this whole fucking thing. And um, I'm not the, the money type person to, to explain that. But either way, it turns out they're not like going to be getting their money because of just the system of the way people can buy uh, insurance. I don't fucking know, man. I think that obviously this movie is based on real events and I didn't watch the whole thing and I'm trying to explain it verbatim for what happened. But let me just tell you that uh, I think it's pretty well done. Like all those little things, like I really like the way it's shot. I like the way that it's, um, it's be- the story is being told. And I definitely think there's a lot of meaning in there and it's not, in fact, this is probably one of the more meaningful movies that there could be because it's really trying to expose and, and put into like a parable or a tale how awful the entire system is and how uh, the system really only benefits some of the, the highest echelon, whereas people who are even comfortably in the middle class, like this lady Meryl Streep is, you know, comfortably, you know, her husband worked his whole life. She had a reti- he had retirement, yada, yada, like you know, they were, they were comfortably middle-class, but even they get fucked at a time of, um, you know, tragedy at this point. Right. So I would definitely say I'm probably actually, probably most likely going to watch the rest of this movie. Again, it's, it's very captivating storytelling. I love the way it's the story itself is being told. And, uh, the acting, the, of course the acting is brilliant there. Everyone's doing really well and it's well-written I think it's going to be a very good movie all the way through to the end. In fact, I'm going to put this one because if you know, you know, you're coming to the Millennial Book Club, you'll know that we rate this on Binge It, which it used to be, used to be much watch, must, used to be much watch, used to be must watch was the, uh, was the, the top one, the number one. You just got to go fucking watch. But now it's binge it. You fucking, you, you buy a pack of diapers, you get your packs of ramen and uh, Nutella, and you sit down in front of the goddamn TV, and you don't get up until it's done. And then there's, um, you know, watch it if it's there. That means if you're at a friend's house or you're hanging around, and uh, someone's like, hey, I'm going to, you ever seen this movie? I'm going to put it on. Fuck it. Why not? I'll watch it. It's there. Who cares? Watch it if it's there. And then the other one is go ride a bike. Do anything besides watch this. Just please don't fucking watch this. And those are our three levels. And then there's shades of gray in between there. And I'm going to put this one between binge it and watch it if it's there. Because I think if you're into... I don't know if you're into Ocean's Eleven, if you're going to be like, oh, I should watch that. It's really not the same movie because it's not like action-packed and as psychological but I think it is a modern day parable. And I think it is told very well, even not having watched the whole thing as already at this point, I, uh, I get the gist, I get the fuck, I get the gist. And I think it's going to, I think it's, it's good. So if it sounds interesting to, you know, at, at one point she actually, uh, it's just her trying to, solve this fraud and this problem. I mean, you could probably look up the Panama paper leak. Maybe you're familiar with what it is already. And, um, this, this is kind of based on those events, whatever it is. So if that's the kind of shit you're into, you know, like fraud and, and, uh, scams and maybe people trying to get to the bottom of scams. I know we did a book a long time ago. Uh, it was called fucking deal, a deal with the devil. Ooh, I pulled that one out. A deal with the devil. And it was about, the mail, like these mail order schemes, that's, uh, these psychic mail order schemes is what it was about. And it's kind of, kind of like that, you know, it's, I mean, not like a direct scam. It's something everyone's got to have insurance, but there's some fucking scamming going on in there. And this lady's getting to the bottom of it. And, uh, I think it's a pretty entertaining movie. So put it right there in between those two things, uh, binge it between binge it and watch it if it's there. Like, uh, if it's there, binge it. I think that's that's what that would be. If it's there, binge it. Why not? It's a movie. Is, is it binging it just to watch the whole thing? Any hoots. So, there it is. I think if we had somebody else to talk about that with, we could have really maybe gone into length. Maybe one of us would have looked up what the Panama paper leak was. But uh, you know what? 
I think this is a, it's a good. This is just a little snippy, snappy, you know, there you go. That's the NBC. But before we go, before we go, kids, we got to announce the next Millennial Book Club. And this one is Messiah. Now, Mr. Justin Mitchell is not with us, RIP, uh, but he did want his, his final wishes were to, um, was to for us to do Messiah on the next Millennial Book Club. He should be on that episode, so he'll be able to talk about it with us. And you should go watch Messiah on Netflix. In fact, usually I read the little uh, the little blurb about it. Let me do that. Uh, a wary CIA officer investigates a car- uh, ca- Ooh, Let me try this again. A wary CIA officer investigates a charismatic man who sparks a spiritual movement and stirs political unrest. A fictional story not based on true events. I like that they, uh, usually they just don't say that. Usually if it's not based on true events, they just don't. But maybe this one is, um, we're already, uh, our view on this stuff is already so skewed and we're so, like, I'm sure anything that happens in this, crazier shit has happened or could happen than whatever's written in here. So I'm sure it's very believable. <laughs> whatever it is, I'm sure it's very believable, right? All right, so Messiah, that's next week, and uh, right into the show if you want to review it, if you want your own suggestion, roadsodamail at gmail.com. Again, that's roadsodamail at gmail.com. And you can also call and leave a voicemail to be played on the show if you call the number 706 200 1213. Again, 706 200 1213. Mom always said, say the phone number twice if you want someone call back. Alrighty. Thank you. How do you do it? Do you listen to a full episode of just me talking? And I, I, uh, I mean, if that's what you're into, <laughs> if that's what you're into, uh, thank you guys for listening. That's it. That's that's how you know. That's how we do it over here at a road soda. If you ever seen it, right? That's your that's your bones. That's the bone structure of a road soda right there. Is what you see, right? What did we learn? That's what this is the part where we ask. What do you? What did you learn this week? What did you learn on this episode? I think if we're looking at the news, we learn that, oof, well, everyone's stupid. I think that's probably the biggest thing. I actually learned that Utah fucking does got some jokes, man. They know what's up. They're probably the most genius marketing campaign ever invented. Probably. Was that. <laughs> and we full... And, uh... I mean, it's for, I guess it's for a pretty good cause, right? The HIV thing, that's pretty neat. Uh, what else did we learn? We learned that Tint um, is, you know what? You play while you shit, it's gonna, you know, you'll probably enjoy it, right? Pass the time as you pass the logs, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, we learned that we should, uh, you know, we can learn that the laundromat, uh, what did we learn in that? That insurance sucks? I think we all knew that, right? <laughs> Guys, uh, I've said it so many times throughout the show, but, uh, you know, you can always call in and, uh, 706-200-1213, whatever, you can write in roadsodamail at gmail.com, and you can, you know, if you, our page, if, uh, wherever you're listening to the show, subscribe so you don't miss an episode, every Monday we crack a road soda, we're there for you, and you can also, um, you know, on Twitter, we're Road Soda Podcast. On Instagram, it's Road Soda Podcast. On uh, Facebook, I think it's uh, Road Soda Podcast. That's right. It's Road Soda Podcast anywhere you look, uh, except for Reddit, which it's just Road Soda. Fuck yeah. Grab that shit. So that's our subreddit over there. Nothing there yet. Um, I, uh, as I said at the beginning of the show, nothing. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'm going to be putting some stuff up on there and hopefully. Uh, it'll, it'll be a nice, neat little community. So, fuck yeah. Thank you for stopping by, everybody. And we'll crack uh, 124 next week as we let this one settle. Have a great week and uh, good 
Martin Luther King's day, if you're listening to this on this day. But, uh, you know, you listen to whatever you want. It's up to you, man. You're, you're free. Also, guys, this week, go to bed early. It's what um, the king would have wanted. He would have wanted you to go to bed early, okay? It's good for you. <laughs>